Shalom, Kala Yahweh Bashem Yashai, Bashem Kokwadash. The Lord is my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. May the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Ashurala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the ugly truth behind Mount Rushmore. But before we get into this, let's read the scripture. This is Psalms 49 and 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Now this is a Scripture that's talking about the wicked, or the wicked being the nation of Edom, or how you would call them today, the so-called Caucasian race. Right? These are the wicked, which are also referred to in Job 9 and 24, when it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right? The Edomites, they are the descendants of Esau, who was Jacob's evil twin brother and who was given a blessing to have the whole world in rulership by his might and basically his weaponry right it also foretells that he would have the world not only in rulership but upside down morally and that wickedness would prevail and be fully grown up within this empire and that this empire would be the last empire to reign upon the earth before the second coming of the Messiah and then the eventual uh, restoration of the kingdom of Israel meaning that the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans would once again be known as the Israelites and be placed in rulership of the entire world along with the Messiah right, with the other nations serving under us right? And in serving under us, I'm talking about slavery. Right? Now, after a thousand years, that slavery is going to be more of a, a, a serving as everybody serves the, the Caucasian race today. But for the most part, for the first thousand years of captivity of these other nations, it's going to be hard bondage in building up our nation. Now, in saying that, let's talk about Mount Rushmore. Now, I've been there, right? And I've seen it. It looks a lot smaller in person, right? And you can definitely see the big, massive amounts of rocks that uh, were moved uh, for this, right? Uh, you could actually see down here, I think this is a person's head, but there's a walk path that you walk right at the very bottom of this dirt hill. And you could actually see this uh, um, entire monument. Now, they were actually supposed to carve their entire bodies into this mountain but it was too unstable and they were afraid one they had run out of money and they were too afraid that it was going to fail from carving or you know deteriorating the mountainside right but what they don't tell you in those tours that i went on right and this is way before i came into this truth right um you know and i just wanted to travel the, the united states well they, you know, they tell you all the good things and all the stuff that they're doing there, but they don't tell you about how the Edomites got a hold of Mount Rushmore. Now, let's read this. It says, Before the president's faces were carved into Mount Rushmore, it was called the Six Grandfathers, part of the sacred Black Hills of the Lakota tribe. The U.S. government seized the land illegally in 1877 after gold had been discovered there president grant secretly ordered the army not to protect local tribes as bounty hunters collected up to 300 dollars for each native american killed the carving of four presidents into the hills took place in the 1920s funded in part by the ku klux klan Right, so you see that this is the history that these Edomite devils are.
trying to hide from the world, right? This is this is their their you know their legacy, man. That they everything that they do, no matter how much paint, you know, they try to smear upon it, it's still a pig. It's still a legacy of disgrace, right? Now you always hear these stories about how the Indians always got their lands stolen and that none of their treaties ever were honored that they had made with these Edomites, right? And and this is just one of the truths, man. And not only that, right, not only did they take this land illegally when they found resources that they wanted, but to to you know to add you know further further shame to it, man, down the road you had the Ku Klux Klan come together and, and create this desecration of this mountain, man. Right? What does the scripture say about that? It says, Proverbs 22 and 28, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Right? So these old, what they, what they refer to here as sacred, you know, Black Hills should never have been desecrated, man. They were set up in, in a way to be looked upon like for for honor man by by the Lakota tribe which by the way if you you're unaware the Lakota tribe they're actually of the tribe of, of Israel man they are the Israelites known as the tribe of Gad right uh, Gad is a uh, their biblical name of all the Native American Indians, right? From here in America all the way up to Canada, all right? Now, there's a prophecy written about Gad talking about what would happen to him in the latter days given by our forefather, uh, Jacob, right? And what did Jacob say? Or what did he prophesy? It's written in Genesis 49 and 19. It says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And that's what happened, man. You had the troop, the these uh, Edomites, man, from the from the U.S. cavalry to the U.S. Army to even right here, the Ku Klux Klan. That's the Edomite troop. That's a troop of the Edomites, man. Right? They've overcome Gat, right, to the point where he, before he was able to roam free upon all the uh, Northern America land structure, man, which was his. It was given to him, right? Because what does the scripture say, man? Blessed is, is he who enlargeth Gad, right? Um, well, the thing is, is Gad was given all this land in North America, okay? And the problem is, is that, or, you know, biblical prophecy is that that would be, over would be taken from him by this troop, right? And this troop being these Edomites, right, who have relegated Gad to live on small reservations of a once great plot of land which used to be theirs, right? And not only that, but they they desecrated their monuments, their landmarks, right? But this is again, this is the way that these Edomites roll, man. They will take what they want and uh, they'll, you know, be your friends and they'll do everything that uh, that is convenient as long as you know as long as it's convenient for them okay and what will happen is eventually the things that you hold in high esteem will get turned into what they want that okay, so take a look at that man right see these three little I guess you call them little faces that's these right here see that And that's what the nation of Edom does, man. This is Isaiah 34 and 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Right? Because you see, it doesn't matter how much these Edomites have built up, how many monuments they have carved into these mountains, how many, you know, things that they have erected. The Lord is going to destroy everything here in America, 
Why? Well, because it is going to be a monument to wickedness in the future. It is going to be something to be looked upon and to be to be given as an example of what happens when wickedness uh, rules the world, man. There, it's going to be, a, a, as it shows here, man, it's going to be a, a land of emptiness, man, and that the line of confusion is going to be drawn upon it, meaning that you're not going to be able to recognize America in the future, man. You can't, you're not going to be able to to look at a map of, a, of, of the once America and then look down upon the continent that was America and be like, oh, well, that's where California was at. Oh, look, that's where Mount Rushmore was at. Or this is where New York is at. No, none of that is going to exist, man. It's going to be a, a smoldering, pitted, destroyed. The scripture even says that the, that the North America is going to crack into three parts, right? Now, this is all going to be the, the vengeance that the Lord is going to put upon the, the, the whore that rides upon the beast, right? The, 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 the great dragon, right? Which, you know, Esau, the Edomites have, came, you know, turned into, man. They started in the Garden of Eden as a small, you know, as a snake. And they've turned into a seven-headed beast, man. A dragon, <clears throat> right? And the Lord, he's going to come and basically destroy these devils and everything they've created, man. What does it say? Though they built up, I shall tear down. The Lord is going to, to destroy what these devils have done, right? And again, this is all part of prophecy. So with all that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rukhah, Kodash, double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.